We are here as human beings to love each other. 20 years may not seem like a long time to many people, but a lot can change in that period of time. Attitudes, behaviors, and what is considered acceptable is different from what it was in the year 2000. Still, one thing about Olivet College is that some things never change, including their commitment to diversity and inclusion. Many years ago, 20 years ago, the dean at the time asked me if I would help start a group for LGBTQ students. And so I got Judy Fails to do that with me. We are very maternal types and we have lots of kids. And we realized that several students were coming out to us and we were happy that they felt they could and we figured they were probably practicing to tell their parents. It was an outlet to be seen and heard, and I think that's what everybody wants. And the other thing was to be seen and heard at a college which recently promised an open and accessible world. One of the first things that we did that was super important was just giving people a safe space. Because at that time, there weren't necessarily a lot of safe spaces. An important part of what it means to be an Olivetian is the fact that we respect people. In fact, here's one of the things that's not necessarily written into the compact or any of our documents, but everyone, when they talk about what it means to be Olivet, is to be part of the Olivet family. It's, this is not just a place where we go for classes. It's not just a job. This is an extended family and it reaches out to all the people, reaches back to 1844, reaches forward into the future. Our founders clearly believed in social justice. That's not the word they would have used then, but they believed in it deeply in the ways in which they thought about it at that time. By the early 1990s, when the college uh, went through this period of introspection and the creation of the Olivet Plan, so many of those attitudes changed here, different administration, and the school then openly welcomed people from all different backgrounds and embraced diversity and really embraced social justice. And so it, it, it was a period of time where people went from feeling repressed here to feeling very comfortable with who they were and accepted and part of the community. This didn't mean that the discrimination went away overnight. Some students still felt as if issues continued on. They began then to tell us that there was some harassment. And so we decided that we had to answer that immediately because you cannot let something, that, something like that go on. So we decided to form a group. The main challenge that I faced on a daily basis was continually confronting the rampant ignorance and homophobia that was present on campus from other students. There were a couple of small things, some I don't even remember who asked us, maybe when President Tusky came in, he suggested that we put up a flag out on the flagpole, you know, the rainbow flag. And there were a couple of people who were like, well, if we're gonna put up that flag, we should put up all kinds of flags. But you know, how many can you put on one flagpole? Events like these seem small in comparison to other instances of homophobia in the world at large. Events such as the ones explored in the Laramie Project. We were very involved in producing advertising and many of us acted in that play when we had the Oaks Theater and Art was the director. The Laramie Project is very interesting in that it was based on interviews with people who were in there, people who knew Matthew, people who knew those who were involved in his assault, the police, the uh, judge and jury and all that. And so this is very much a case of what you might even call a journalistic approach to theater. We were intentionally casting faculty, staff, students, and community. We wanted everybody to be on that stage and represent the community that Laramie was. Of course, we don't live there, we don't talk that way, but we wanted the age group, we wanted the diversity of age groups and situations to be on that stage so anybody in the audience could see somebody appear and, and relate to that person. 
The Laramie Project was based on the murder of Matthew Shepard, who died October 12, 1998, in Fort Collins, Colorado. Matthew Shepard was a college student, and he somehow was with some people he didn't know very well, and they killed him. Really, they did it just because he was gay. That was actually how hate crimes began. That special designation for crime was because of the Matthew Shepard case. We invited Matthew Shepard's mother, and she read her victim statement that she read in court, but then she discussed with the crowd, accepted questions from the crowd. I think it was after she spoke, I was riding in the car with her and some other folks. I think we were taking her to the airport or to a hotel or something. And I was just sharing about my experience with my family. And at that time I wasn't out with them. And it was like the next kind of thing on my queer to-do list to like, okay, started coming around, okay, check. You know, now I gotta come up with the family at some point. But I had asked her, you know, about you know her experience and asked for some advice. And so she, you know, she encouraged me to come out and it was a really moving, it was just a moving experience overall to have her there in that moment at that point in time. And so I came out to my mom that night, called her up, you know, told her. It took me a few more years to tell my dad, but I got there eventually. When you don't know people, it's easy to say it's their fault, you know, they're bad. But when you sit across somebody and eat dinner and they talk about their son who had to die for this, it's going to change your mind. It's going to change your heart. Common Ground performed the Laramie Project in 2001, but little did the campus community know the group existed before that. It has its roots dating back to the spring of 1999. We named it with the students. We named it Common Ground. We had direct conversations with the Christian group on campus. The idea for the name in part came from these tensions. The idea was like, you know, we may agree, we may not agree on a lot of things, but through our differences of opinion, there needs to be some base understanding, some common ground to recognize that we deserve the space to be ourselves and to not be threatened in the process of doing so. We were founded on Christian principles. And Christ says, love the Lord, love your neighbor. He doesn't say love your neighbor, but. The idea of loving your neighbor can still be difficult for some people. So common ground still had to be careful in order to be accepted. We wanted to attract more people to our club and attract more of the administration and faculty and staff. And, and so if you do things that are so bizarre, you run a risk of alienating people who would really help you. What changes people's hearts and minds is meeting people, seeing them as a fellow person, and then going, oh, and you're gay. Oh, and you're black. Oh, and you're Hispanic and then realizing that stereotypes and other things in your life don't quite match up with that person that's sitting across from you. The events Common Ground hosted were designed to attract people of all backgrounds, regardless of race, gender, and sexual orientation. We had fun and clever ways to get people talking and thinking about visibility. Judy was in the library, the li librarian, and she thought, well, well, let's just have a door and have people open the door and come out. It was in the red lobby in mud, and people could walk through it and come out themselves or walk through the door and say, I have a niece that I love who is a lesbian. You know, this is part of my family, you know, and, and I'm invested in this because someone I love is gay. In 2015, a decade and a half after Common Ground was founded, the United States Supreme Court passed the monumental court case Orbridgefell v. Hodges to legalize gay marriage nationwide. Students didn't do a big party. They celebrated individually with their peers in their groups like Common Ground, like the Greek houses and societies. That's another thing I want to mention about all of that. Greek houses and societies work really hard to champion LGBTQ plus issues. Groups, supporting groups on campus is the best way for them to survive. Alpha E has definitely had lots of members who were kind of in both. Not that like Alpha E is specifically a Greek house that's like 
focused heavily on acceptance toward like LGBTQ individuals. I mean, a lot like all free societies should be. A couple of times we actually held common ground meetings in the Alpha E house because those were the only people besides me that showed up. A lot of times it was just we were, we were just meeting to try to discuss like plans for for group activities. My first event that I threw with the group I performed in, it was the drag show. Our first drag show was amazing. And I personally had not been to one except in Las Vegas where they're, they're really entertainment more than they are drag shows. Because the, the normal drag show is our p normal people doing something they love and they might not be experts at it. And I performed This Is Me from The Greatest Showman. It's one of my favorite songs and it kind of inspired me to start my drag journey even though I didn't continue it after that moment. It was a very fun time. There was the Candor Ball, which was a black tie affair event. Also well attended, had some really nice people showcasing their talents on our campus. It was basically a fashion ball where we all came together and dressed up however we wanted and we had a group of staff judge all the contestants and we gave out awards based on, you know, different categories of fashion. We had people come in ball gowns, we had people come in street clothes. It was really an environment where everybody was accepted, everybody can shine through, you can dress up how you want. Last year, we started our Transgender Day of Visibility rock painting event. And so we do that in the spring semester, and we gather a bunch of students in the square and we paint rocks. And actually, if you look around uh, the Gender Center and even come down to our office in Mot 111, we have rocks hanging up around our, our space that are painted by community members and students at all of that college. The group continues to have events today, even if it's not quite the same as it was 20 years ago. Previously, the group was called Common Ground. They reinvigorated it just a few years ago, 2018 or 2019. And I'm really grateful to see Queers and Allies, the successor of Common Ground, if you will, thrive in many capacities with a great leadership, a lot of student involvement on our campus, and a lot of great events hosted both semesters and hopefully for many years to come. Especially with this being such a small college, it's good to have that diversity and being able to experience somebody else's point of view can really help you with that empathy in the future and just being more accepting in general. The purpose of Q&A is to create a safe space where all members of the community can feel welcomed. And we wanna create a space where we can all come together and share our views regardless of where they are, but being able to like do it in a safe manner. When I came to Alabama and I saw that there was a GSA, I instantly jumped in because I felt that at like a small college, there had to be, you know, a common ground for all of us to come together. A lot of times students are surprised and they'll say things like, well, back in the day when people didn't accept gay people. And I say, you mean like this morning? In the 2018, there was this LGBTQ youth report that came out. LGBTQ students are at the greatest risk of suicide and self-harm. Now, what I like to focus on, there's actually a 90% reduction in suicide risk for a transgender and fluid or non-binary student who finds an affirming community that accepts them for who they are and their gender identity. Even though homophobia still exists in the greater world, at Olivet College, LGBTQ people are accepted. Common Ground may have started in 2000, but its mission still lives on today. Some traditions pass away, but y'all think up new ones, students think up new ones, you know, and new events, and it's, it's just been wonderful to see it carry on. I think it it's just that whole idea that we value people and we want to connect with our students and help them grow. I'm not necessarily the person who has to be involved in Common Ground for it to happen because there are other people as well who are gonna come forward and help and there weren't 20 years ago. You come to college to, to broaden your horizon and to look further and so that's, you know, you don't discourage open thought here. When Common Ground is at its most powerful, it brings us together. And it helps us to celebrate our differences because we are, we all, we're all different. 
we have different beliefs, we have different approaches to life, uh, there are all kinds of things. But if we celebrate the difference, as opposed to letting it be a barrier between us, we come out better.